and it feels so good. I don't want to get copyright. I can sing better. I know I can. Because I'm <laughs> that special type of interesting. <laughs> so, it's been a while. Yeah. Who are you? That crazy woman you've put up with for a long time. <laughs> oh, you're that bitch. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good to see you again, old friend. So, oh my God, for those who don't know who you are, which I think I'm kind of shocked if anybody doesn't know who you are at this point, tell them who you are. Really simple. Look for Rosetta Allen and I do artwork, jewelry, crazy paintings, and now color stuff and writing books. I do a lot of photography and nature work and hiking and adventures, so... I'm kind of all over the place on my channel, but there's a focus, which is creating beauty in a fucked up world. And especially nowadays, we could definitely do it. But before we start, you know that lovely, lovely thing of housekeeping that we have to do to make sure all the fancy people, you know. Anytime I'm right. on. Anytime I'm on. I'm just going to get you a billboard. Just throw it right in the back of the, of the wall. But... This video is intended for viewers 18 and older. Viewer discretion is advised. And of course, as always, like, share, subscribe to our channels. We like the likes and the likes like us. Share it because you want to. And subscribe because, seriously, if you don't subscribe, then we're not going to get traction. We, it's kind of a thing. It's pretty cool, cool. We entertain you. You subscribe to us. You give me good content. It's great. And we won't call you a man baby or anything like that. We'll actually be nice. Not unless your name's Ryan Johnson or JJ or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cinema Antichrist and his minion. Well, actually, it's <laughs> the, the I, Rumor has it that, you know, that the rolling bouncing ball BB-8 is actually a model of Ryan Johnson's head. And that's why he screwed up The Last Jedi. Hmm. Well, it would make a little sense. Well, I'd be mad, too, if my head was rolling around all over the place, getting kicked well, in the head. What about it? That everything rattling, so it's empty. <laughs> Just like The Last Jedi. Empty and soulless. <laughs> and, of course, if you didn't know that was a joke, I can't help you on that. But in any case, like, share, subscribe to our <laughs> channels. So, okay, it's been... The last time that you and I spoke was actually the beginning of the <coughs> thing. And basically... We were trying to stream together, and then the world kicked the living crap out of both of us. Yeah. I had to go back on the road double time, and you had to actually do your thing on your end. Basically, make sure you held the house up and make sure that you didn't recreate the... Um, what's that movie? The Wizard of Oz and... It's been a very oh, interesting year. Yeah. You mean when my city I live in, which is about a quarter million people, Metro, uh, had most of the entire city either damaged, destroyed, or at least have every tree ripped out and dropped on properties by a storm that hit out of the blue with sustained winds at about 100 miles an hour and gusts that broke every machine we have because we're not designed for that here because we're not in a hurricane area. Right. <laughs> The one thing I don't like is the fact that basically after about a month or so, we I'm out east, so I we heard about it, and I'm actually indirectly I'm actually directly influenced by your area because some of the freight goes through where the Midwest, as it were. So if anything happens in one end of the Midwest, it affects all the Midwest, and if you know that, if especially if you're in commerce or mm -hmm. freight, what have you. So one small thing can screw up everything. And mm -hmm. after about a month, I didn't hear shit. I'm just like, uh, there is still like 18 other states out there. I'm, we need to make sure they're doing okay. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. just excuse me in my toxic man masculinity of thought here, you know, thinking that people are okay. That patriarchal thought of actually trying to be a provider and caretaker. Or just having sympathy. Yeah, shame on me. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. I should know better. I'm going so, to... Um, I'm going to... Go ahead. I was supposed to be doing the Eagle book and I had the mailing list set up and then I set up the mailing list and a few days after I ended up in the hospital and on a bed rest for about a month and a half. 
I was off of that bed rest about two weeks when the storm hit and I ended up spending almost three months in another state unable to work on the book because of, yeah, I couldn't be home because of all the crap going on. So I'm getting the book done now, but I have to completely redo the mailing list because they only give you a six month grace period on those. Even when uh, acts of God? They automatically delete them at six months. Their system's programmed to do it. Okay, so you know why they did that because it's a patriarchal god. So if it was a uh, Vishna, Kuru, Kotulu, Hala, the female <laughs> matriarchal goddess of earth, wind, and fire, not just earth and wind, but also fire, then you would have gotten at least maybe a couple more days. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm got to redo the mailing list page and start really promoting it on every channel, but I've got both books, the main version and alternate completely laid out design. Most of the background's done and I'm filling in the text on the first book. Awesome. Um, and I'm well, doing a lot of custom artwork that'll go as different tiers for the campaign and specialties in that and have custom covers being drawn by friends that I'm going to actually be painting and colorizing like I do my high-end art and my comic stuff. Wait, are you actually giving me tidbits and sneak peeks right now? Am I that honored? Did you choose me to actually do this? Oh, well, some of this stuff is known. and so I'll show you a couple of pages. I haven't shown anyone yet. Okay. By all means, we're going to get some sneak peeks, folks. Uh, I have some jewelry I just made the other day, which I'm thinking may become a tier for it. You will actually have a choice to add them on, I think, because I, so I made all this jewelry the last few days and it is bottle cap and photo frames and stuff like that on necklaces with my photography and that includes big of eagles and i also have a whole bunch more eagle caps i'm preparing to put in new ones that i've already ordered so if i actually okay. here let me pull these out a sec these are going to be going into some fancy um frames i got ordered that i'm going to be putting on necklaces it's eagle eye and out in the field and stuff like that photos mm -hmm. So, and this whole bag is nothing but eagle photos that are prepped to go on that stuff. Um, so a good, good little bag of it. And then there's, um, you have timing. I know. I have great timing. There's frames here. So in this set, you have pieces that are finished and you pull them out here. If I can actually freaking function my fingers and... You actually see like the eagle in the frame here on the necklace. Nice. And I've got a bunch of different types of those in this. And then... <laughs> a bunch of bottle cap ones I've done. Where you can actually see all the eagles inside the bottle caps hanging on the necklace. See, I like that. That that looks... I, blah, 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 I speech is gone with me. I like the contrast with the yellow and the bottle cap. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of different styles of this. I've ordered more supplies to do some extra ones to go with the stuff I was already cutting out. And that's supposed to be here in a few days. I will be putting the photos of these up in little group sections in the next couple weeks. Okay. So that'll be there. Um, and I'm doing all kinds of um, photo jewelry and jewelry in general, which is going to start being posted to sell soon. That's nice. Uh, so that's the cult you were we saw earlier. Yep, that's a baby cult out in Wild Horse Sanctuary in South Dakota in mm. 2018. And this a baby elk in 2019. Oh. Oh, I'm going to name you Elkie. <laughs> So, and there's just stuff like that. And I'm really trying to use a lot of my photography in the jewelry I've been doing. I have been mass making jewelry and ornaments and stuff like that for years and selling it to people. So I'm going to be trying to start posting a lot of the stuff that never got posted while I was dealing with medical issues. So it should be interesting to start selling that stuff off. Well, definitely. I look forward to it. And definitely, I hope that it actually goes really well. For, well, I know it's going to go well with you. So I know you. You're going to get it going one way or another. <laughs> Stubborn, bullheaded. 
solid but, business. It's, it's, it's the art of the deal. It's what you have to do. So with the Eagle book, I have a couple things here. I am doing um, five sets actually, and I'll let people pick between them. It's the same four drawings done five ways. I have the first two sets done. Mm -hmm. So first way is just plain postcard style back with the colors done on it. The drawings are from Shriek Comedia, and he is a really good artist. And then it's the colorist work is done by me. And as you can kind of see, that's the postcard style back ones. And then I have the blue set finished. What was the name again on that? Shriek Comedia. Uh, I'll give you the link to put into the stream. Excellent. And then it'll either be in the chat when it comes up or in the future, in the near future, or it will be in the description. Yeah. Now, question, how long I, are those, are they, they're not complete, correct? These ones are, are done. I okay. still have others to finish. That one was done intentionally with no background. These are the ones with backgrounds. That's what, I'm, what I meant to ask. How long did, okay, the very first one, Actually, no, let's go back to the one with the wings spread out because that's the one I like also. We talked in the pre-show. Something like that. How long does it take to do? Okay, he actually did this based on a photo that is in the book, which I'll give you a screen share of in a minute and compare them to you. But he said the drawing took him a couple hours, quick digital drawing. Mm. And for this one, the colors and background actually took me about two and a half hours. So this one actually didn't take too long because it's a soft, more simplistic 60s retro style. Mm. This one took a bit longer. I can see that with the detail, especially like sort where your th uh, ring finger and thumb is in between that section where the feathers are. That if you pop it a certain way, it actually looks like real feathers. Mm-hmm. And that's got a lot of colors and details, and yeah, that one took a while. And then there's this one, which also kind of took a bit more time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the depth and shading. And you can kind of tell I'm learning styles and techniques as I go here. I am new to a lot of this. This is actually a Bottler Eagle, which is a special eagle from Africa. Ooh. And then there is the one that I'm thinking is going to be a poster art for the campaign. This is a more um, interpretive creation I made, but it's based on my photos of spirit. And this one is completely done by me, drawing colors and all. And this is my spirit. And I will start with this one to show you the comparisons here, which is really interesting because you need a screen share. So give me one moment to pop over to the other screen here and make no sure problem. I have the right tab open. <laughs> and go over here to the application window and we share. And you can actually see that this drawing is based on the bottom photo on this page of the book that I'm working on. Okay, yeah, I see it. Very good profile. And that's Spirit the Eagle from Iowa Raptor Resource Project at Lake McBride, Iowa. And she's my sweetheart. She's one of the oldest eagles in the world right now. Really, how old? She's about a year younger than me. She's almost 36 now. Oh, my. I didn't know they could live that long. Uh, she, that makes her one of the oldest in the world and almost a decade over the average life of a lot of them. Keep Actually, on over a decade uh -huh. over the average life of most. <laughs> That's what's up. So she's crazy on that. And, yeah, she's got to be honored in the The Butler Eagle is in this, too. Let me show you that. Um, so that drawing I showed you that's the bottler is actually based on that. Kind of looks like the, the, the bottler looks like he, she, it, don't want to misgender the eagle, um, looks like it has a hood on her. Yeah, it kind of does. It kind of has definitely 
it feels African. It's not just because of that. It has a lot of the African style to it. And then we'll go to the next one. And do, 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 do. Actually, yeah, it does. It does kind of look like a Zulu warrior headdress from um, the Shaka Zulu movie back in the 80s. This one is actually based on what's about to come up here. It is a little slow running this program because this program has a lot of stuff it's running at once. Mm. It's a very intricate program that helps really build the pages. But you see the picture closest to the other edge from us mm. is actually the eagle that this was based on. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the other, we go back to spirit for the next one. No, I'm not used to this at all, right? How quickly do I scroll here? <laughs> and you're the, doing better, I said so. <laughs> the other one here on the bottom of the page that's closer in is what this was based on. Mm. And then, do, 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 do. and these are all my own photography, all my own work. And the one that you like with the wings open is actually based on the top photo here, which was actually taken in the middle of a rainstorm. That's a good action shot. And so that's what those are, and that's what they're based on. And I have, I'm doing orange back, purple back, and green back style for all of them as well. And I'm gonna let people actually pick which ones they want to become the postcard art for the campaign. And I'm gonna sell all sets off after. So that's the Eagle book I'm working on. And this is the actual book here. And if you can actually see, there's going to be two versions. And both versions, there's no repeated pictures in either. Okay, so it's definitely its own special edition, basically. Yeah. It's designed to have the same layout, very similar photos, but be different angles, different pictures, all that. So no pictures directly repeated. So you see on the cover page here is the my favorite out of the first eagle I took pictures of ever. How long ago was that? July of 18. So this tell me about started. that. Okay, we were driving out. I had started doing nature photography that year, actually. And we were at this park and we came around the corner. And right as we came around the corner, there's an eagle sitting in the grass next to the freaking picnic barbecue pit. Mm. just sitting there and I swear my hands were shaking trying to get these pictures I was so excited at that moment because I'm very into eagles and very into birds of prey and then we get these pictures and they came out so well and it just that was it I started tracking and now I actually go out and do expeditions hikes exploration to go find eagles and find out where they're building nests and report them into animal resources, rangers and stuff, and actually help work with conservation for eagles now as a volunteer while I'm out doing the photography. <laughs> and it all kind of started from this. <laughs> so that's cool. So basically you're not just photographing for prosperity. You're actually helping the ecosystem, for lack of words, the ecosystem actually continue. You're helping the species thrive. I've seen my problem I have with a lot of the people that work in nature photography is one of two things. Either they don't respect the private space of the animal and they don't respect how the ecosystem works as they're out there doing it. Mm -hmm. Or they're just disconnected. It's all about them. Or the one I've seen in one case that I ended up getting blocked by a bunch of news companies for was I was calling out because he completely photoshopped it to look like a completely different place than it actually was and then tried to promote it as a place to go visit. <laughs> and I know he photoshopped it. I know it wasn't what was actually there because I was there that same day and I watched him taking the photos and I was taking photos too. <laughs> so, <Wow. laughs> yeah. And yeah, me and my mom got blocked by a bunch of news companies for calling it out and pointing out where he edited and removed parts of the actual natural scenery there to try to change what it looked like and make it a different place. 
given the way this year is rolled around, I'm not really surprised by that. It's just like this person's make not mm. gonna expose me for the uh, ah! uh, a couple of years ago, but it cracked us up because it's like, why would you try to fake a photo if you're trying to promote people to visit a place? Because that's just gonna make angry tourists who feel they were cheated. Yeah, it is bait and switch. It, 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 and also, and it so that, mean it, it's a beautiful place. And this is the thing too. What if it's one of those things where, okay, you're, you have a, a son or daughter, five, six, seven years old. They see the picture. It's like, mommy, daddy, we want to go there. And then we take you there. And all of a sudden it's like, the, this is not what I saw in the photo. You just shattered some kid's dream all because you wanted to hide a photo. I know it's an extreme case, but you know, you got to think about those things. There is such thing as truth in advertising. Mm hmm. And yeah. yeah. So I have a problem with that. I, I'm very against editing or altering photos. Even if it, a photo shows a slight blur here or there or a slight wobble here or there, I would rather it looks like what actually happened than change it. The most I will do with any of these photos is change the crop edge slightly on it so it'll fit the place I want it in the page. Mm -hmm. So what you see is what you get. These are unedited other than slightly cropped or zoomed sometimes. We well, got to think, too, the authenticity of the moment. That That's another thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to capture that moment in time. And to even uh, edit it the way, I guess, like you see where you're coming from, the way to, to edit that photo that that person took, you're cheapening the moment and also making that moment in time basically a fantasy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very, that's, yeah, I can definitely see what you're talking about with that. So then we have this as the starting photo that kind of was the catalyst that led into it. Mm -hmm. This is a few of my favorites of some of the newbies I took before, and I know it's a little slow to load. I am sorry. And you got two that are white headed, but you can see they still have a little of the brown left in their transformation. That would be third to fourth year as they're turning bald headed. Mm. The other two are clearly younger. And so I took these, and they're from different locations. But I just find them fascinating for the different reasons, you know? Mm -hmm. Then you got this, which is an adventure. Because you can actually see them swimming, fishing along the frozen area. Now, how awesome is that to see in real time? It's incredible. I actually went out and did a photography session yesterday. And I actually hooked up my laptop on a hotspot through my phone. So that I could sit backstage in StreamYard here and actually took one of my friends that never gets to get out because he's always taking care of people. And he goes over in England along with me, talking to me. And when I was there taking the photos of them fishing and dive bombing and flying around, I was actually holding the laptop up so he could watch them fish and stuff in a big group spinning around the water. So he got to experience something he's never seen before in real time. Especially if you can get that right moment in the snapshot, that makes it more, it definitely gives it more of an epic feel. Yeah. And so, I, I might, again, my goal in life is to share beauty with the world and to make the world a more intricate, beautiful, and happy place for people. I did that for him yesterday. He got to experience something he'd never seen or wouldn't have a chance to, and he was happy. That to me makes it worth the while. That to me is a lot of the purpose of what I do. These were part of last year. Mm -hmm. My husband. And what I say, I guess actually this year, last year, it's Valentine's Day. Okay. These were taken on Valentine's Day as part of an exploration together, me and my husband. Well, that's that's so romantic. Almost a year ago. That's and cool. then you have this set, which some of them, one of them here on the bottom, 
actually was taken when I was out exploring with my husband on his birthday a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And the others you can see were taken different places. And this is just an example of some of the ones out in brown areas, fields and stuff like that. Every background on these pages is taken directly from colors out of the picture <coughs> and blended faded into the image. Say it last part one more time. You cut out. Every background here mm -hmm. is taken, the colors are taken directly out of the photos on the page and then blended and faded into the image. Okay, okay. So it's a really intricate way to do it. There are things like this, which are nest photos. And you can actually see the adolescent babies getting fed in them. Oh, that's so cool. And then you have moments like this. Just chilling, no fucks given, just chilling, just like, oh, it's a nice day. Hmm. I'm hungry. <laughs> And you kind of see how much time I've spent doing this as I go through this, and you see the variance in style and everything, and all the different areas they're in. Wow, that it looks like he, it's um like guarding something mm -hmm. from the way I see it right now because it's a little further back for me. Looks like a soldier guarding, like like the, the guarding the castle. This is a page that actually makes me almost want to cry, and it's also one of the only pages that has a photo in it that was taken by somebody other than me. Top or bottom or both? Top one. Was actually taken by my goddaughter when she was all of nine years old. Good shooting. Because she would do photography explorations with me, and she's been learning it from me. I was going to ask you that down the road, if you were actually teaching anybody else this or showing what you do to a I've been younger generation. Photography to my goddaughter and my husband. I've been teaching a lot of um, the inner city kids with disabilities and other stuff, how to do things like make jewelry and do other projects to help them have something to do with their time and energy. That's something I've done for a long time, long before any of you guys knew me, but it's something I feel is kind of important. So, on this page, I actually have a golden eagle. Hmm. Not just the balds. Now, especially with the fall background, it's it's it must be hard to well you probably no pun intended you probably have more of an eagle eye than someone like me. Oh, I'm very good at spotting things from a distance. I'm really good at that, which is part of what's made me function so well in my photography. Mm -hmm. um, there's just moments that I think are really iconic shots, if you can get them. Like the head back screaming. Now, for certain shots, like, okay... I imagine you have to like sit in a certain spot for almost like what just sit in a certain spot and like try to wait out and see what they're going to do and then try to take the photos as they go along. There's an amount of that. There's an amount of you explore, you hike, you travel, when you find them, you sit for a little bit, you take photos, you see what they do. If they're not doing much after a while, you move on, find another one. There's an amount of exploration and things, you know? Has there ever been one that you like you just missed a shot? Oh, there's always moments like that. None of us are perfect out there. No matter what some of these photographers will try to show you, half of our photos we scrap, and the others, trust me, aren't as good as the top choices we pick. And to think, at least now, everything's digital, but back in the older days, you know, you know when it was you expensive. had, like... It was expensive back yeah. then. And imagine when the cameras first started. One shot off, making it and getting a perfect shot is very rare. It does happen, but it's very rare. These are actually during the first snowstorm we had a few weeks. In sometime in November, I'd have to double check the dates because I haven't okay, filled so all of it out yet. 
And that's actually a bald and a juvie out in the snow tre snowy trees. Now, for people like me that don't know what a, juvi a juvenile? Juvenile. Or? It means okay. an eagle that is beyond fledgling age, so it's after six months, but it is not fully matured, matured yet. They're technically juvies to six years, but you really can't tell after the fourth year because they look like grown ones. Mm. They just haven't hit full sexual maturity yet. Okay. So usually when people refer to juvies, they're referring to the ones that have fledged from the nest, no longer stay with the parents, and haven't fully become bald eagles as we see them normally yet. And I'm showing you more pages than I show most people, but it's you. I appreciate it. It's definitely nice to get a sneak peek on something. I'm definitely getting. I'm cool for sure. I'm definitely getting. And then there's this here, which is just a collection of different eagles on perches in spring. You get a sense of a feeling of the, like, the newness of the, of the season, too, with these pictures. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just get close-ups that just are stunning. I can see that, like, uh, I can, I can see it, like, with like a uh, American flag on the background. Mm -hmm. That's so, that's America right there. You remember that I told you that at the beginning of the year I was in the hit and run accident with Chris in the community. Yes. yes. Um, by so the we way, had the accident, and I stayed the day in the city he was in to make sure I was okay and stuff, and drove home the next day. Um. It was a few days after that the injuries fully surfaced and found out that I had seven bruised bones up my spinal column. So it was about 20 hours after the accident that I was driving six hours through the snow and ice home with seven bruised bones up my spinal column alone. Um, <coughs> along that drive home, I saw something and I couldn't resist. So I got out and hiked in the snow and ice because I wanted the fucking picture. And I was going to get it. And I did. Oh, you earned this one. Yeah, nice. And those eagles sitting together on those icy branches with the icicles really shows how powerful and strong they are. It also gives kind of a 3D effect to the image. It does. It does. It, oh, it, at first, it wraps around almost like cocoons it, and then at second glance, it looks like it's pressing them out. So mm -hmm. it's doing like like a warping effect almost. And so, yeah, there's just this amount of wonder to some photos. And I love what I do for a reason. You can tell I find them everywhere. If I find them, I'm going to get the photos. Mm. This one is not fully grown up. It's not fully changed color with the head yet. So that's got to be right at year four when it's finishing changing. So you come on down here and this page was added in last minute. These were photos that were taken just before that storm hit and I didn't have time to even go through them until after. So nobody's seen this page yet. Oh. I've always wondered what, what they're thinking. Probably, can I eat it? Pretty much. I just, I'm fascinated with eagles. I really am. And I'm doing all kinds of other animal projects too. I'm working on swans and buttons and other stuff for books. I want this to be basically an encyclopedic set of different animals' photos in these creative art books. But it's going to take a while. But these photos, look at these. The one in the center, um, to, uh, that one with the blurry background, it definitely pops out the, the eagle bar. Mm-hmm. 
there are favorite moments of mine. This was my first real action shot of one flying that I ever took. This was beginning of November in 18. Nice. Just flying through, just boom. <laughs> so there's definitely some um, interesting shots people are going to get. And yeah, everything here, this is my hard work. Everything, editing, writing, picking, cropping, sorting the photos, writing the photography, doing the hikes, everything. It's all me. I don't have an editor team. I got nothing else. I'm doing it myself. And you know, honestly, sometimes if if you sometimes it's even if you have multiple resources, it's usually better just to oversee and do be hands on because then you know exactly what you're getting into, exactly what you want to do, and the product that you know for a fact that you put out there. Yes, it helps to have like a group of people, but sometimes you get stuff like this where it's just all one creator. Looks like it's about to attack something. It's guarding the nest. That's the core and eagle. Okay. And the reason it had that goal is because that look is because their nest is right next to a major hike trail. And they're also one of the known raptor cams. So people will come along that hike trail and watch them. The eagles are used to that. So as long as you're on the bike path trail, they leave you alone. You step off it, they get angry. How, do they actually come down and try to swoop and swoop at you? Uh, not at me. I've seen them get on the edge of doing that to somebody else who started to step off the trail towards the nest. No, no. Like stay in your lane. Like, literally, stay in your lane. The reason why that eagle looks that ready to kill is because just behind it was this. That would be the eight-week-old baby it was taken care of. Oh, so, so cute. it's a don't mess with my child. And then say, there, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, and then there's this one too, which is a ten-week-old at, at that nest trying to learn how to use its growing wings. Now, eagles, have you, have you ever been able to see – now, I'm not sure how eagles do it with their young. Do they do the same thing with other birds where they try to push them out of the nest, basically? Uh, not that I've seen. The, they seem to fledge more on their own and just come back and visit for a while and then move away. Basically, they start getting so curious and crazy, they want to go. Got it. The point where the biggest danger to a lot of eagle babies is falling out of the nest before they're ready to fly. Because they'll start climbing around all the branches around it wanting to fly. And then there's spirit. This I is the so many pictures of her. This is the elder the elder one. Mm hmm Go ahead and uh, explain to the folks uh, the background and the spirit. She is from the Raptor Resource Project. They rescued her when she was a baby and injured severely, and she was never quite healed enough that they could release her. Mm -hmm. So they kept her in a large pen and feed her fish and keep her over on the lake where she can actually smell the air and enjoy herself. And they take good care of her because she's too injured to live on her own. What were the injuries? Or do you know? Uh, they don't get the details on her. They do on some. They don't on others. Okay. Um, every animal that they have at the Raptor Resource Project there is one that was too injured to be released into the wild. Because that's what they do is they rescue the injured birds of prey and those and nurse them back to health. There was a, um, when I was younger, uh, not by much, it was probably like late 20s. Yeah, so probably 27, 28, 29 around there. There was a, um, an expo type deal where the local zoo was bringing out their birds and they had, uh, I guess it was a toucan. I want to say it was a toucan that they had. Where this poor bird, they had it in, you know those cat collar things that they have for when they get the dog collar, the, the, the cones? 
Mm -hmm. They had this toucan in the cone, and they're explaining to me why they had uh, why they had to do it, and it it was it was very sad. But I saw that they took the time to make sure that this bird was going to be okay and survive to at least live out the rest of its life and do what you do. Like the people that do this, like, like I've seen from my own eyes, they really care about each and individual mm -hmm. animal that they bring in. It's not one of those things where it's robotic. It's like, okay, go, bye. It's like, okay, we're going to take care of you. We're going to do what we need to do. So I, I've grown this huge appreciation for after resource projects. So I try to them, support them any way I can. And that's also why I've worked so hard to get as many photos from them as I can into this book and into the future Birds of Prey book, books I'm going to do. Because mm. I want to draw attention to them. I want to get them more donations. The area, the land that they own, that they run this on, was so destroyed by that storm. They haven't been able to have it open since. It's not going to be open for a while. Mm. The only positive to that is there were so many downed trees in that land that they've actually got a group to come in and agree to pay them to let them collect all the trees for the products. But it also means that they have it shut down and they're having to use really difficult means of access to get out there and back every day to take care of them, all this other stuff. So they've been in a really rough situation for a while. And um, so, yeah, I just want to help them all I can. Yeah, uh, there should I'll have a link for them in the description also. I'll give them a shout out. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That's very noble. And actually it, it that really works out for them. It's like here, give we'll pay you to clear out your land. Like great, just put right back into into the sanctuary. That and you can see um the photos from Spirit really recently is she is starting to have issues as she's getting really elderly. She's not as fluffy anymore, and her feathers are actually turning gray. Right. So that's, a, that's definitely evil to see some things. I don't know how much longer we'll have her, but I love her to death either way. They have another eagle that's in the pen next to her, Reginald. Mm -hmm. And not only does he have permanent damage to one of his wings, but he has no voice box from the damage it took. He actually got caught with poachers. Ah. Oh. And so he go to where you could see him scream and not a single sound comes out. Now, okay, you mentioned poachers. Like there's a there's a po poaching community that actually goes after these. Goes poachers after these. will go after any animal that they think there's something on that they could actually make money on selling as a collector's piece. Oh my. I actually found a poacher's dump site for a deer over January, and it literally, you could actually see that they had literally grabbed these young bucks and they were getting the just budding antlers that looked all weird. Mm -hmm. And you could actually see that they just grabbed them and actually sawed into their head and cut them off and killed them while they were moving. Oh my God. That's. And I broke down sobbing when I found this. I just that's I can't, I can't express what poachers are because they are just it is so much about what can we make money off of on the animals. They don't care how they do it anyways. They don't care if the animal's endangered. They don't care how they kill the animal or if it hurts it or not. They'll do whatever they need to get what they want. It now would, especially in my experience, when you hear about poaching and poachers, you only you think about you know over in Africa or in like Southeast Asia where they're they're going after rare tiger teeth and uh, tusks of uh, of elephants and uh, you know rhino like horns that. and stuff yeah, like that. Horns. Not even like you wouldn't think that this would be happening here. It does happen here. They. Eat they go after deer and elk for specific stage antlers, which are considered rare, but are not usually in legal hunting ages. Mm. They go after birds of prey for the talons and the beaks. Mm -hmm. They go after things like moose because the antlers are so expensive and most places restrict how that much they could be hunted. <laughs> um, it's a lot more of a problem here than people like to admit. 
also someone that pays for the, for the so someone that bids the highest could put it on their shelf and say, "Well, I had this shipped in for seven point five million, and yeah, it was only a couple months, so but it was totally worth the money." Meanwhile, you just took another animal out of the ecosystem, out of, out of the circle, mm -hmm. and helping deplete the very thing that you covet so much. And I am. I'm a tribal naturalist. I have no shame in hunting for food. Mm. And I have. I also believe that the best way to handle it if you eat meat is that you don't cause the animal any more pain than needed. You make sure it had a good life. You make sure it dies quickly, painlessly as possible. You treat it with respect. You don't waste parts. You show honor to that life that gave itself up for you. Right. There's um which is honestly why I'm willing to hunt even though I can't stand to kill is because I would rather hunt and know that it lived a good life than get it from a packing plant and not know. And you know what? That makes more sense. And now for some, anyone that's thinking or state or saying, well, it doesn't seem like there's any difference. Really just what she just explained. You're, you're not, taking a part of the body and letting the rest rot and basically wasting life in that aspect. You're actually using the meat to eat. You, um, I know there are some indigenous tribes out east from over here in New York that I've learned that they'd use everything. The bones would be used for that's certain tools. Standard for, that's standard for most native tribes. Right. And that's why you actually see stuff like this around my room is because, yeah, I actually make artwork out of bones. This is actually the shoulder blade of a bison. Really? Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about that when you pulled it out, but I wanted to wait for the show. <laughs> yeah, this is the actual shoulder blade of a bison. And down here, if I ever get it finished, is the actual shoulder blade of a bull bison. Ooh, okay, I'm going to see if I can bring you out, uh, bring you uh, solo. Will it work? There it is. That's now, the perspective on this, this bone would be the equivalent bone of what runs from about here to here on our shoulders. That's huge. <laughs> yes, folks, that's what I said. <laughs> She's got a big one. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> but so I don't believe in waste. So I get bones from trade shops where they get them from people who either collect them where they're fallen in the woods or sell them in when they have to stop an animal attacking their home or they're hunting for food and stuff and there's parts they can't use mm -hmm. but they don't want to waste it they sell them to the traders in the hills and that's where i get this stuff now the traders do they look for specific um specific animals from specific areas so let's say if i run into a deer out here and there's a trader out in Montana that wants to actually have a East coast deer. Is, is that a thing or do they stay strictly with some of them? The will. Some of them will, some don't. It depends on who you're talking to. Always go to traders. You know more the history of where they get stuff from because there are mm -hmm. those that will get the less honorably collected stuff. So it's all about finding out who these people are before you give them business. Now, the piece to your left, uh, how long did it take to actually finish? Once I actually had the bone, I actually sanded the entire bone with diamond tip Dremel because regular sandpaper isn't going to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then painted it, I would say, probably about mm, 10 to 12 hours, give or take on that one. And, yeah, it's actually painted as a dragon eye. And you guys see there's layers of patterning for a celestial effect in the background. If you wanted to make it like a little story out of it, you could say it's like a dragon's tooth in the eye of the tooth or something like that. Run with it, folks. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, good. I didn't, so didn't back to Reginald story. here, and the reason why he got rescued and so he's a sweetheart, but he doesn't have a voice box. And you can actually see one of his wings is damaged and kind of twisted up into him some. He kind of looks like uh, Martin Van Buren. Is it Van Buren, am I thinking of? But if you can actually look right here along this wing compared to here, 
You can actually mm -hmm. see this wing is damaged and doesn't open up right. Such a shame. They have a uh, owl there that was actually attacked. I don't remember what it was. It was actually freaking animal traps and stuff, but I ended up getting caught in it and he's got one eye. I hesitate so, to even ask. I don't want to know how that how they found yeah. him because he's got head damage in one eye. But he is the sweetest animal. And he actually will sit there and open his eye and hoot at you friendly and be all nice and sweet and stuff. And he's the sweetest owl. And this is freaking massive freaking great horned owl too. How old? So, I don't remember the age on him. I'd have to talk to them. I actually do have some eagles in this book that are from zoos. Mm -hmm. So I have like buzzard eagles. Wait, what am I? I'm trying to reckon. Oh, okay. I see it. It bl The head blended right into the body. Mm hmm. And they're just weird thing. And then you got the hawk eagle. And those guys are so pretty. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, wow. It looks exotic. I got sea eagle here staring off out the cage at a bird that was flying by. Uh, sea eagle? Uh-huh. Uh, where are they from? I don't remember offhand. I have the written down in my notes, but I haven't filled it all out yet. Okay. So, folks, that'll be in the book. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the African Bottler Eagles, and these have become my absolute favorites because it's like you take this really hooded, like, kick-ass, like, Assassin's Creed face, mm -hmm. blend it with an eagle, and then add some of the colorations and wings, almost like a fucking songbird. I love that post. Just like, I am sitting here thinking of Wakanda. Wakanda <laughs> forever. <laughs> and you can actually see here that down the neck and the wings is different colors. Mm -hmm. And you have bright red here. You have black and brown in speckles down the head. And then you have this orange and, black and red back. And you've got blue spots down the wings and on the tips. And this gray with speckles of colors in it too and they're so freaking pretty uh, how, can, how can people harm such beautiful animals like this mm -hmm. look at this look at the colors of that back oh he, 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 he's flexing like look look at my feathers like whoa whoosh look at the head you can see there's so many colors in his head feathers and then the orange down into the silver and blue Mm -hmm. That looks like a freaking songbird. It's so beautiful. I am so enamored with bottlers. I go visit them every chance I get. I can see a cartoon with that, like a little kid's cartoon with the, uh, with the eagle, with the bottler. And so, yeah. Each book will be right around 99 to 100 pages. <laughs> Just that. Nice. And you can see here all these different colors. Now, there's this very special photo that's only going to be available in the other version of the book. And as you can tell, the, even the cover photo here is a different angle of that same set. Mm -hmm. And instead of the one swooshing over the water, you have ones flying through the trees. That's pretty. That's that's a money shot right there. So it's like all of these are like different but same kind of layouts. The layouts are basically the same, but there's different poses, different ones, different events, or different ones from the same event that are a little different. Mm -hmm. So you have a basic book that's designed to look like a sister. But none of these are the same photo. And they all have little differences. Now, for those, uh, so what program are you using? 
this is actually called Artisan. My husband found, and it does everything. It is click and freaking drag to actually crop and edit the edges here. Let me show you real quick. Literally, can go like this. It'll help you zoom and stuff, and then you just click and drag down, and it'll help you align the photo in place. So I go like that and look at. Oh, that's nice. It will help you very quick edit and crop and clean every image into the position without actually having to edit the photo or change the content of it. Mm -hmm. it it'll help you shift and shape. It. it shows you the safe zone, trim line, bleed area, all these things that actual publishers want you to use as you're designing pages. It does for you. It'll help you design the backgrounds and all that. It is so freaking easy. I and it's for that too. It That's is not fine. free. It is a paid product. <laughs> but it's more really, prizes, right? Yeah, it's really made this so much easier for me to figure out and do. And it's designed for photography books and scrapbooking effects and stuff like that. So it is so easy to layer stuff together and work. So there you go, folks. You know, just one random day walking out and seeing an eagle. And years later, now this young lady above me is creating much needed new media that's out there. This, 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 this new art that we can actually appreciate and pass on to others. So over here, you have the alternate for the sea eagle, which is actually a close-up of it. So it's not even the same angle or anything. So you get mm. completely different on that one. Instead of the hearted back bottler with wings flexed out, you have it with the wings crossed in and the focus on the red of the neck and stuff. So you see the different angle of the back. So same but different. But this is the one. I put this in here. It's really not similar to any other photo on the other book. Mm. And it was actually taken by my husband. But it's such a stunning shot. It had to be in these. And I wanted it to be a specialty for the extra book only. <coughs> this That's is the shot job. my husband took for me. And I noticed, too, it's like the way the shots were taken, it's like, Again, moments in time, but it seems like these birds have these eagles have personalities. Like, mm -hmm. what? Are, like, it makes you really like question. Like, obviously, you're thinking like they're thinking probably I want food, but it's like if you had a higher sentience, like, what are you thinking? What is your mood? What is your moment? Are you thinking about that eagle you lost long ago, or, or are you thinking about that meal that just just got away with you? Yeah. And so that's the Eagle book, and that's almost done. But filling out the paper, all the text information on all of them, the, where it was taken, when it was taken, date it was taken, information on the Eagle itself, if things are needed, stuff like that, is a lot of work. It's, to me, the hardest part, and that's where I'm at right now. So that's why it's a little slow at the moment. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, all that artwork I showed you guys is all being done as specials for it. Now, which do you do you have a preference in what you do, the photography or the drawing, or which or like you know what I mean? Anything artistic. I just don't like the business end that much. Yeah, Unfortunately, okay, right. I have. I'm good with designing the book because that's still artistic. It's filling in the technical data that's tedious and monotonous to me. I totally understand. The one thing I'm not going to I'm not really a fan of yet. I'm getting there is especially with this medium is actually doing the editing cuz I first off I don't like watching myself. I hate watching myself. But then to hear myself say the same word over and over and over and over and over and trying to make sure I get to cut perfectly it, it's a tedious process. I'd rather just be the, just create, but I understand that the editing goes hand in hand to make the talk better. Mm -hmm. So that's the Eagle book. I'm also working now on a veteran pinup book. This is going to go to Lulu instead of Indiegogo. This okay, is, yeah. I've got a bunch of artists working with me, and we are designing pinups, which are going to be all, all of them hand colored by me, some drawn by me. And it's going to be designed as a retro from. 40s era style up to 80s era style of pinup girls done in military styles. 
And when I post it, half of every sale from Lulu as they sell the book is going to go directly to veteran charities. There you go. Well, you got to support the boys somehow, so get your pet up, girls, today. I have the example of the first one I did all by myself, which is my girl. Let me bring up. Uh, wait, wrong button. You can drop the screen share, actually. That part's done now. That works. And, so, uh, oh, and yeah, there's oh, that oh. one. And that one was a freaking pain in the ass to do, because if you actually look at the leg and the hand and the bodice of the brassiere, mm -hmm. that kind of detailing with that kind of micro colors was a lot to do. Now, for those that aren't don't understand what this is. This is called a half naked woman. It's also <laughs> called a drawing. Now, drawings have been communication tools for many years. And women are, even though you think they were just invented in 2016, have been around for millennia. Your public service announcement. Thank you. <laughs> well, see well, that. Working on a bunch of those. Most of those aren't finished yet. I do actually live stream working on them so people can actually watch me coloring them in in details, which also means people get to shamelessly look at the image of the sexy half naked woman on the camera for hours at a time. Uh, <laughs> or you could see, say it's an educational tool to show young drawers how to learn techniques. Yeah, this but is yeah, how to draw right. fancy clad sex kitten. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What are you doing, son? I'm learning! I'm learning! And this is one of my first weird, crazy projects I did for no real reason other than I wanted to see if I could come up with something different. Mm -hmm. The image is painted out black background and <laughs> painted out white silhouette of my cat, Athena, and then everything inside it is hand-drawn in by me. That's nice. So, and that was a crazy stunt to just see if I could do it. <laughs> so it was just like a whim. There was, what was the inspiration by it? Or was it just a whim? Uh, the inspiration was uh, combining some of the black and white hard silhouette style artwork I do mm -hmm. with inspiration from like adult coloring books and intricate lace work and stuff. And put them together and see what happens. And I'm going to do a bunch of those with either silhouette pinup girls or silhouettes of different animal photos I've taken. Now, a previous stream, uh, one of the, one of the um, shows that we did on um, the, uh, the universe is show, which hopefully will be coming back soon. Once everything starts dying down folks, um, you were talking about shading techniques. Uh, can you go into that again? And if you want to use one of your pictures as an example, just because play. Let's call back up the sex kid. She's a good one for that. And it's really fun. Plus, I can turn on the desk camera so you can see a little closer details on her. Okay, um, today. Yeah. Okay, so with this, you can actually see the um, fading on the rear is obviously the darker in the back, zooms into the front and stuff. Mm -hmm. To do this, I lay multiple colors and multiple depths at different pressures down and then blend on top of that. So for her skin here, there's dark brown, light brown, pink and yellow blended into a beige color then blended with a soft skin shade and then a white over mm -hmm. just that just to pop her out a bit now so now for someone that's again i try to come at this like half the time i really don't know it's not my realm what i do have to ask I, I'm not sure if it's a fair question to ask, but you're, I know you can give me a good answer or at least try to clean up my question. Why is it so hard? And I'm going, making a call back to the last Captain Marvel, sorry to invoke her name, the Captain Marvel um, picture that was made. Why is it so hard for artists to put out work that they're proud of or, you know what I'm trying to say? Because I think most people aren't in it for the art anymore. I think most people are in it for their political agendas. And so it's a lot easier to push an agenda than actually care about the quality of your art. I don't think they're hiring artists who are passionate for art. I think they're hiring artists who are passionate for politics. 
and that that's funny you should say it that way. Let me see if I can bring it up on my end. So let me bring this out for a second, and I'm going to actually add this to the stream. So, uh, oh, I'm going to do it in a certain way. Um, see if this actually, oh, wait, hold on. I'm boomering it. I stole a word, yes. Now, focus on what you really want to see. Shameless TNA. There you go. Now, I will say it this way. This is for fair. This this is definitely this is definitely on the realm of fair use. So you can't get me on this one, but I'm doing this for a reason, only saying these people for a reason. Um, see if I can... Oh, hell, I'll just bring up the whole page. Add stream. So I'll say Klingon propaganda, but we know what I'm talking about. But in those days, they needed the artistry to push the point. It makes It, it, it doesn't make sense to me mentally that you would have... Let's just say it, shitty drawings to promote your message. You want your drawings and your message to coincide with each other to actually build on your point. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, here it is here. Like, okay, you can see right here the um, picture of Lennon with the Zeppelins and the hand here and how they got the – because this video was actually pretty good. It was um, – I think it was fan-made. It was actually really funny and really – it feels reality, scary, but funny. But yeah, I just see the medium just it's slowly going away. We need more people that know what the hell they're doing. So basically that's the update of what I'm doing. Uh, a lot of jewelry, pinup book, eagle book, and working off and on with different people for small projects and stuff on comic campaigns and Trying to get some colors work done. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself teaching more people uh, because of the state of art as it is right now? I think that's what my art streams do. I sit there and, yeah, I color on stream and I talk to the audience. But I talk about why this color works better here, why I want this one, why what kind of background would go better with this, things that make artists think and I think that that's what my streams will do and if it only ends up being a few people watching and a few people supporting and learning from it at least I'm spreading a little more love of shadowing and actual art sorry no you're fine I think you're totally allowed mm -hmm. like because I this lazy ass shit where it all looks flat and no dimension do you know why I love this here because they fucking did the shading justice Mm -hmm. This, by the way, is the poster from the first Tilt book. Hallelujah Tilt. Do you know why? You want to see what campaign work I've been doing? By all means. My friend, Doc Hogg, who I didn't know until I backed his first book after I interviewed him, mm -hmm. did Tilt, and I got it, and I loved it. And it's actually a really good comic. And in the middle of going through all this trauma and all this all this aggravation in my life he reaches out to me out of the blue and offered me a chance to work on some stuff for the second tilt book and so for the one that just hit funding last night I did a couple things just for reference, I Rose, did. today is the 19th of December. I did the variant cover with Vic King, who drew it, and I did the colorist work on it. Mm -hmm. And he offered me the chance to draw it. I don't think my drawings on their own are good enough to create those images from scratch and do justice for him. Mm -hmm. So I opted to have him hire somebody to work with me. 
which worked mm -hmm. out well. He and Vic ended up doing a bunch of stuff together <laughs> and like each other. So I'm glad that worked out really well. Um, after that, I got a um, last minute drop in on something because basically they decided they needed another piece for it. He hired Vic to do it and they decided they didn't have a colorist they wanted for this piece yet. And so out of the blue, I got this question to do this last one and I got the image I'd like to say late Friday mm -hmm. and I had it into him Sunday morning because it was actually technically due Saturday night. Basically, I had no time to do this as a colorist work, but I did it. <laughs> so the first one, the cover, I did have the time for and I am so proud of what I did with it because I've never done a lot of the kinds of um, artwork and things that were on it. This is Big King's drawing and my color work. My work in a printed comic. The deft perception I, I like. The one thing I, okay, I try to just to give yeah, you a no, little bit. No, you can criticize some of this because I, I, there's things I think I could have done better if I had had more experience with this, but everyone has been really supportive of it. It's gotten good reviews. And I think if he works with me in the future on the next campaigns, I can get even better for him. Oh yeah. It's just a progress of time. It, it's better. It, I said it to someone else in a previous stream. It's better to get a bunch of L's and then get the W than getting a W and then getting a hard L. It, it, it Everything takes a process. It takes time. You're not going to create the biggest, bestest pizza overnight. Mm -hmm. But one thing I had issue with when I tried to do drawing, there was a cartoon that I had an idea for. It's, it was, it was a um, kitchen centric cartoon. I couldn't, I had the uh, mustache man's problem. I can't draw people. So like buildings and stuff like that. I had no problem doing it. Um, yeah, it's funny is I find it a lot easier to do all the colors work and drawings on people than I do buildings. With the exception of hands, really. Mm. But I'm getting there with that. Vic does very well on people, though. And so this was the uh, cover. And then on um, that Friday, I got the image. He told me Thursday, can you do a really quick help on us? Because we need the colors done for the back of the deck of cards. This is the back image on every card on a custom deck of cards for the comic campaign. Mm -hmm. And this is actually what inspired me to do the pinup book. So that should give you a clue what you're about to see. Hold on. Let me remove the logo here. So, you oh, never mind. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, hello. <laughs> I did that in a day. My colorist work on that. And turned it in. And when it was done, he had this decked out gorgeous image. He trimmed off all the excess around the edges. Mm -hmm. He brightened up the image slightly because it loses mm -hmm. a little bit of that translation and being copied, photographed, and scanned. And the image that he has on the campaign looks more like the drawing did in person. Mm -hmm. was perfect. They did a beautiful job doing that. And then they added all this stuff about tilt and all this and deck of cards and stuff. It is so freaking amazing. Now, you're not school trained. You are basically field trained, correct? Yeah. Now, I, I started oh, to take some art classes, and I freaking detested the professors, so I quit very quickly and never went back. So, I found – I'm not sure if this is a good analogy. It may be so. Now, when I was a chef, when I was in that career, I was I'm, – I'm, I'm school trained. So I had to learn the basics about sauces, the mother sauces, special stuff like that, and then techniques, uh, learning how to cut, how where to cut, uh, simple basics. I've noticed that I'd learned a lot more from people that are field trained. So the dishwasher that became the the head chef, because they're not saddled by the the structure of the school, and I see more. 
I mean, I don't know if it's my opinion or if it's the opinion of everybody out there, and maybe you can back me up on this. I think that people that are field trained have more open mindedness about their craft instead of being, well, you have to do A, B, and C. Why do A, B, and C where you can go A, C, B, F, G, and you know what I mean? I think that's also because when you're learning something on your own, you don't have the, um, it's good and bad. In some things, you need that structure training in order to be able to do the basics because it's really important to know those basics. It was important to do the apprenticeship stuff with carpentry when I was doing it. But right. that apprenticeship stuff and combining that with my art training and doing custom wood pieces and wall decors and kids' furniture for their rooms and stuff like that, that's where the artistry part comes in. That's where the field <laughs> training comes in. But learning the basics was important. With art, because you really don't have wrong with art if you're really trying, field training is perfect and makes sense and works. So I think it depends on the thing. But yeah, you learn more when you have to and you don't have somebody there to give you a cushion or tell you how to think or what to think or what to do. Right. If you fuck up, you fuck up and you you realize or try to re on the fly, try to figure out a way to straighten up and fuck up. With my drawings and my colorings, I had nobody teach me anything. I never did this stuff really as a child because I didn't have the money or resources and I had severe tremors from seizures. Guess what? I still have nerve damage in both arms and hands and shoulders from seizures. I still have tremors in my arms and hands. So the mm -hmm. fact of doing this kind of work and the photography and colorists and drawing stuff is actually um, kind of insane. Um, so I never really did this stuff as a kid. I learned to draw in my 30s by watching shit tons of YouTube videos and streams and combining techniques I saw people different, different people use and adding my own flair. Mm. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So. <laughs> you, it's how I started this. I've watched all you guys. I, you, you and two other YouTubers were the first three people to actually even recognize who the hell I was and my quirkiness. And I'm, I had a chance to look back at some of my other videos Oh my god, it, it, it's atrocious. It's alert. I'm gonna keep them up because I want to kind of show the same thing. If you're learning this craft, then you're gonna see me fail. I, it's not per perfect spit polish, and I know for a fact that I, especially with this this channel, I probably said some stuff that's pretty dumb or slip of the tongue or what have you. But as I always say, even on my Twitter page, I do everything for a reason. Now. The reason may be purposeful, it may not be purposeful, but I'm doing something. What are you doing? Instead of bitching about, I and mean, I'm going into another realm with this one, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. Instead of bitching about, you know, well, that person sucks, and, da, 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 and then, what are you doing? And I've had this with this. It's just like, you know, this is not going to launch. This is not going to be a thing. Then come and do it better. Now, which goes in my question. Do you feel, as an artist, and I think you can speak on this more than I can, that the craft itself is not necessarily, not necessarily dying. It's having a... It's going into almost... It doesn't seem like it's going to go to a point where it's going to go into a renaissance. We're going to get so much poor quality stuff that all of a sudden out of nowhere, a new, a new generation group of artists come out and actually just take it over. I think we're already starting to see that. I think that's what a lot of the people coming out of fandom and comic skate and all that are pushing to do. I think the problem is that we were born of the fire. We were born of the fight. We were born of having to fight to not be attacked and torn down by the outsiders. So I think there's an amount of when the outsiders, when the antis don't attack us, some of them are so used to the fighting, they eat their own. Because they can't get past what we're used to. I know too, the average mean of the average ages of some of these people I've seen were have been as old as 
Dunkak because I think he's like seven trillion years old. <laughs> but, I'm, <laughs> but I'm sure the actor is probably within our realm, within the like uh, 50s, 40s, 30s. We're all 60s, 70s, 80s kids. We're all Cold War kids. And I didn't see nothing. Uh-huh. Maybe there are a few 20 year olds and younger, but on average, I've seen mostly our age group actually going forward in this fight. Actually, I know a lot of people on the streams I'm on now that are in their 20s. And even one of the ones that's on Geek Speak, which is a stream I do every week with Curie Morning and Will Gentry and them. Mm-hmm. One of the guys that's on it every week with us is 18. Really? We are starting to get the youth interested in turning away from what they're seeing is the norm. Good. That's that's actually a good thing because honestly, it's like I wonder sometimes. I do. It's it's going to be a fight, but that's why I think the culture war is so important because I think we're fighting for the hearts and minds of the next generation. And you know what? It's been an hour and twenty two minutes, and I think I don't want to beat this point over the head, so I'm going to leave you with the final thought. We are in a world that has decided to destroy creativity in hopes of creating a uniformity to government control. This is being subverted by people who try to claim that the only creativity is to conform to these movements. In other words, be crazy, be off the wall, but only be that way if you fit into our little box. Mm. This is entirely dangerous to not just us, but the future generation. March to your own drummer, have your own beliefs, follow what you find in your heart is true. And those who love you, those who are worth your time, those who are worth the effort will love you regardless whether they agree or not. Do not tear others down for another viewpoint. Open your mind, open your experiences, and learn to think outside your experience. Seek for beauty, seek for light, care for others, care for animals, and try to make the world a little less dark. I think we can end it there. So, Rosetta, I'm going to make you big and you get to promote yourself. Go. Just look for me, Rosetta Allen, on YouTube, or Eagle Riding Rose, if you want to, over on Twitter, and... There's, it's a lot of art. It's a lot of promotion, and there'll be books and comic projects and promoting other people. It's all about trying to change this world and make things better and more creative. All right. So, and I'm going to do this on my end. So, hello, I am Ian Slayer, the freaking Puerto Rican, as it were. Oh, wait, I don't really want you to see that. Oh, what the hell? I'll probably talk about that later uh, sometime down the road. But any case, thank you for the fans that are on Rosetta's channel, if this is on there, and for allowing me to visit and actually say hello. Um, and for those that are on my channel, I'm glad you were able to watch, and please support our sister in the fight, as it were. And I guess to say it, what she said in more condensed form, think well, it's legal. But... As. Is it the controlled thought zone? Yes, it is, sir. See the sign? School. <laughs> oh, my God. That was perfect. So, as I always say at the end of all of these, to the best of my abilities, Ian Slater, see you later. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>